languages like uh, uh, ML and particularly ML, SASL, KRC, and they used some data types and pattern matching. So ML particularly had this amazing polymorphic type system. We now refer to it as, as ML style typing, but at that stage it was just ML and it was completely amazing. Then on the, other, the uh, other side of this slide here, there was a new work on lazy functional programming. That came from several places, including uh, David Wise, who's sitting over here. And uh, here the idea was that you, um, uh, you might use call by name rather than call by value. Uh, and this was, if you think back to the lambda calculus, this was plainly the way in which God intended uh, reduction to take place, or at least church, that is, uh, Alonzo <laughs> Church. So. <clears throat> Uh, so, so this was very seductive, and David Turner and others wrote exciting papers about, uh, about what lazy evaluation could do for you and infinite data structures and so forth, and we were pretty excited about that. And Guy Steele, is Guy, is Guy still here? And, uh, and Jerry Sussman and, and others at MIT were writing papers about lambda the ultimate go-to, lambda the ultimate uh, imperative, lambda the ultimate declarative. This was pretty exciting too. We were too young for the 1960s. We were in short trousers at that time. So we had missed all you need is love. But we had the slightly more geeky slogan, all you need is lambda. So at the same time as all this, stuff was happening on, computer, on the computer architecture side. Lisp machines were coming out, built by Symbolics and, L and LMI, and these were exploiting the, the language they were executing with, uh, with hardware acceleration. Um, data flow architectures, lots of work was happening on data flow architectures, both here at, uh, um, in the States, in MIT particularly, but other places as well, Utah, um, and also in Britain at uh, John Gerd and his hench people at, uh, at Manchester built the Manchester data flow machine, and Ian Watson is somewhere, somewhere here. Was Ian? Ian, where did you go? There's Ian Watson, uh, John Good's a hench person. So they were building machines which, which executed functional programs directly. At the same time, uh, Turner and others were describing graph reduction mechanisms in which you could uh, evaluate programs by transforming graphs inside a machine. This was quite similar to data flow, a little bit different. I don't have time to say very much about it. But, uh, and Turner in particular wrote this amazing pair of papers describing SK combinator reduction in which you translated these lambda terms into this absolute mess of SK and I. And if you look at the SKs and Is, and here are some, they shout at you machine instructions. So, uh, so you maybe think, well, maybe we should build machines that directly execute this stuff. So into this highly volatile mixture of ideas that, were, that intoxicated us, uh, God arrived in the form of John Backus. And he gave, this is, this is, he gave the Turing Award lecture um, called, uh, under the title, Can Programming Be Liberated from the Von Neumann Style? In which he not only made functional programming respectable by describing FP um, in some detail, but he also put forward the idea that we might want to, uh, to liberate ourselves from the Von Neumann bottleneck of, uh, of fetch and execute um, by, by thinking of executing functional programs in parallel. So this was just amazing. This was light, lighting the blue touch paper on this firework that had been building up. Because it made, um, it made us think that uh, functional pro programming was respectable. And God had said, go forth and build new languages, and better still, new computers to execute them. So there is nothing that, uh, that young research students like better than a, than, a, than a call to arms like that. So off we went. Um, and uh, and uh, it's hard to explain exactly what it felt. I, I think it, it's kind of like being on drugs. And boy, did we inhale. <laughs> we, and the result, as you might predict, was complete chaos. So the, the, uh, the 1980s were essentially occupied by uh, lots of different research groups going off and doing, doing exciting things. So uh, many conferences, that the first um, meeting of the Functional Programming and Computer Architecture Conference happened. And note the computer architecture bit. It was all tied up together. Uh, the Lisbon Functional Programming Conference was born. They subsequently merged to form ICFP. Many languages appeared. Many compilers appeared. Many computer architectures appeared, including ones that executed S and K directly. Burroughs even patented the idea. Mostly doomed. Mostly doomed, alas. So uh, several of us were working separately on this kind of stuff. And, uh, but it became clear that because we were each having, having, having our own language, our own computer architecture, well, our efforts were get, getting um, diverted. So we met at, uh, almost by chance in 1987 at the Functional Programming and Computer Architecture Conference. And we said, we, we just want to agree a common syntax. We all essentially have the same language. So we believed that all we really needed to do was to form a consensus about the language in order to reduce unnecessary diversity. 
We had absolutely no clue what we were taking on. We thought it was going to be done in a year. We'll be over by Christmas. But uh, in fact, it was two and a half years later before um, we produced the, the first version of the Haskell report. And so here is uh, the timeline. So we started in September 1987, um, and the first exciting thing, well, I suppose it was our first meeting, our first main in-person meeting, was to choose the name for the language. So we all, uh, we all went to a whiteboard and wrote up names we liked. I think it was, a, a black, was pre-whiteboard technology, you know, blackboard. Uh, we wrote up names we liked, and we crossed out everyone else's names that we didn't like. And in the end, there were very few names left, and it was, uh, was mainly curry. So we ended up, um, we decided we couldn't call it uh, couldn't call it curry, there were too many bad puns, so we called it after, um, by, after Haskell Curry's first name. Um, and uh, Paul Hudak actually went to see um, uh, Haskell Curry's widow, Mrs. Curry, who very graciously agreed to allow us to use his name, but her parting comment to Paul as he left was, you know, Haskell never really did like that name. <laughs> But we were stuck with it by then. <laughs> so then off we went. And uh, here is a, uh, a photo, the only photo I could dig out. This is not of the, the Haskell committee. This is uh, a meeting of Working Group 2.8, uh, uh, many of whom um, uh, belonged to the Haskell com uh, committee. Here, so here they are um, in Oxford in June 1992. So this is, at this point, we're a couple of years in. So this gives me a chance to introduce my co-authors. So Phil and John, would you like to uh, just stand up here, please, so we can, we can see you? So here we are, over a span of, um, of uh, 15 years, many things have stayed the same, as I think you will agree with me that we have retained our youthful good looks. Uh, though Phil is noticeably less hairy than he used to be. It was extremely hairy phase in those days. Other things have not changed. As, uh, as you may notice, if you looked at, look at it carefully, my wardrobe has not changed. <laughs> This came as a shock even to me. Those of you who know me uh, well will know that I don't pay a lot of attention to what I'm wearing. But it was a bit of a shock when I saw this slide and realized that this is still part of my active wardrobe. I didn't just get it out of the, uh, the back closet. This is active, active wardrobe. So, so here you are. But um, now, I have, uh, now I've uh, explained this to you. Uh, since I'm engaged in highly exothemic activity at the moment, I'm going to take it off. Because uh, I'm going to get hot up in this. Excuse me. There we are. Otherwise, I shall uh, uh, go off. Oh, right, so now we have. No. Uh, <laughs> it, it's upside down. That's why it's strange, is because it's upside down. Yeah, I could throw it into the audience. Good luck. <laughs> You're supposed to smell it. <laughs> So actually, yeah, I believe it has been washed in 15 years. <laughs> 15 years. So many things uh, uh, have stayed the same over this last 15 years, but, some, but Haskell has actually occupied a pretty large fraction of um, the lives of the people who've been involved in making it. Uh, so just by way of making that concrete, I'll just show you something else about this picture. This uh, he here is my wife, Dorothy. And also visible in this picture is my daughter, Sarah, who at this stage was in an embryonic form. But uh, 15 years later, here she is, uh, considerably bigger. So this, this puts Haskell in perspective for me. Furthermore, my children taunt me that Haskell is really my first and best loved child. And uh, in fact, this cat that uh, Sarah is stroking here is a recent uh, family acquisition and is now called Haskell. It really is, and I had nothing to do with it. So here we are. We've uh, now reached May 1992, and uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, third iteration of the Haskell Report is published in SIG Plan Notices. So this is a big step for us, because it's, uh, it's a kind of step towards respectability. I think it was a really big issue of SIG Plan Notices, so we have a big thank you to SIG Plan, and to Richard of Wexelblatt in particular, for allowing this to happen. So. Um, we then, uh, the, then, the, then follows a, a period in which uh, there's quite a lot of technical development, partic particularly about monadic I.O. that I shall describe in a second. And then uh, uh, later, about February 1999, we, uh, we decide to uh, fix a particular version of Haskell that we called Haskell 98 um, because of the 99. You see, and it was, uh, it was aimed to be a stable point at which, uh, uh, which people who wanted to write books, so at this stage it was becoming useful enough that people might want to write books about Haskell. And um, 
and so it would be useful for teaching, consistent across implementations and all of that good stuff, while allowing Haskell itself to progress independently. So we, we, we gave the, the funny name to the stable version, the, uh, 